Okay, we're packing up our bags as we're going to hike until Machu Picchu. And Nick just drove down the road and just went straight for it. We are Nick and Mathilde, and in 2022, we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender. Europe, the Americas, Australia, Asia, and Africa. We want to see it all. This is day 517, and we are in Peru. Welcome to the next Meridian Expedition. After our drive through the desert of Peru, and the road all the way to the city of Cusco, we are now out of the city again for a special project. We just picked up all the drawers from the campsite where we stored it for a week. Uh, the car was in perfect condition. We're now on our way to Machu Picchu, the next destination. We're super excited because uh, it's one of the wonders of the world. We'll do half of it by car and another part by hiking. We're going to get the tickets last minute. I'm hoping we can get some. Uh, I've already been here technically in 2018. It will be Mathilde's first time, so it will be really interesting for me to see it again and for Mathilde to see it for the first time. Unlucky for us, there's a bit of rain, but we're hoping that it will stop so that we can get the Machu Picchu in its best form. Direction Machu Picchu. The road to and through the sacred valley where the Machu Picchu hides has been a roller coaster of conditions. Rainy on concrete, cloudy on concrete, blue sky on concrete, cloudy on dirt road, across bridges, along train tracks, up high on gorgeous plateaus, freezing on foggy roads, a non-stop change. It felt like we went through the four seasons on our six hours journey. Whoa, let's hope Machu Picchu won't be like this, otherwise we're not gonna see anything. Incredible. Like it's the tradition in Peru, when we go in the mountains, it's always a lot of switchback. We left Cusco at 3,500 meters, something like that. And now we're at 3,700. But the reality is that Machu Picchu is lower down, is around 2,500. So at some point, we don't know when, we should go back down again. And we eventually did go back down through windy roads. Looks like a crazy noodle. So, still on our road, we got rain, we got sand, we got elevation, we got mountain, we got plains. There's plenty of ways to go to Machu Picchu. The most traditional one is to take the train up to a village called Agua Calientes, and then there you're right next to Machu Picchu. The issue with the train is that it costs an arm. So for two people, for Nick and I, it costs two arms. So we decided to go for a mixed version of walking and driving and walking and driving, which first, we're going to have lunch. So this one's a little bit different. We got plantain like we used to get in the Caribbean. Uh, tomatoes, this chicken, and I don't know what this is. Me neither. It looks good. Yeah, and uh, obviously I like spicy, so I'm gonna put all of this. Buen provecho. Buen provecho. If you watched the last episode, you'd know we just come back from a week in New York in the United States. And we missed our cheap side of the road simple lunches. Just a little break to refuel in a long road, but slowly, slowly, we get closer to our objective. And as we follow the river Urumbamba, we are now getting inside the crumbling canyon that should lead us to the end of the road, our destination for today. So now we're on a dirt road. So, we deflate the tires. From that point on, the road got narrower. And in most sections, there is hardly space for two vehicles to cross paths.
dangerous cars on this road. Yeah, so single, single roads, very bumpy, very muddy. We move slowly but steadily for the most part, until we meet randomly with a Swiss couple considering the next road obstacle suspiciously. Spoiler, it's the kind of road obstacle Nick loves the most. Funny situation, we meet those two uh, French speaking Swiss people who were very hesitant to go and Nick just drove down the road and just went straight for it. So I It was very deep though. I yeah, mean, it was very deep. I think it was door level. The rest of the road is not in better conditions and is completely under renovation from beginning to the end. A man on the site even stops us to warn us. So he said we have to drive carefully because there's a lot of rocks that have fallen and that there's big uh, mud holes. After seven hours on an ever-changing road, we make it to the historic sanctuary of the Machu Picchu literally the end of the road for the albatross. There, there is a small land owned by Mr. Escobar who guards the cars while we will continue by foot. But first, we need to negotiate the price. Okay. Found our camp spot for tonight. So I'm going to explain everything in detail. Basically, either you go by train, and as I said, it costs a lot of money, or you can drive until this tiny, tiny place at the hydro electrical uh, production site which is the end of the road literally and from there you can walk on the train tracks all the way to Machu Picchu so that's what we're doing so we're going to spend one night here tomorrow morning walk to Agua Calientes try to get some tickets over there and hopefully either tomorrow or after tomorrow we will be able to visit the famous Machu Picchu and we found ourselves a nice camp spot and we are not the only one. Obviously the big truck has to be German. It's always German. Good morning. Today we walk to Agua Calientes to try to get those tickets for Machu Picchu. We prepare the bag and we're gone. Okay, we're packing up our bags as we're going to hike. Not so much, 10 kilometers until Machu Picchu. And then uh, over there we need to get our tickets, most probably for tomorrow. In any case, we'll have to spend one night in Calientes, which is the place where we're going to hike, which then you start the hike to Machu Picchu. So we're packing up our bag for one or two days uh, trip. We're going to be staying in a hostel, so we need to take our towel. And, conveniently, we can hook it all up together. Bam! Ready? Ready to go, let's go! Machu Picchu, baby! Let's do it! Okay, so today the plan is to go to the red line. So go all around here and reach the red section. And this blue line is going in the canyon and follows 
the train tracks and technically the mountain we see that we need to go around is this one and I don't know if you hear but in the background we can hear the train which is the only way up to Caragua Calientes so we're probably going to see it hopefully before it drives on us <laughs> El señor Escobar que va a guardar el albatros Camping el owner and he's going to keep our car safe huh? Mucho yeah, gusto just the time to register ourselves and we are officially inside the sanctuary of the Machu Picchu. 10 kilometers until Machu Picchu. Technically it's until Calientes, but it's the same distance and it's this way. Let's go. For the next two to three hours we will be following the legendary train tracks along the river, all the way to the bases of Machu Picchu. Heard you want to leave this place But we grew up This old town Just put it all behind Remember you and I Would always find somewhere to hide And we were kids So we could see And hear the water run Never gonna cry when we're gone Awesome. Oh. Tu le vois où? Mais c'était pas le super bien caché. Putain, bien joué de l'avoir vu parce que c'est quand même subtil, hein? <laughs> Made it. <laughs> Sketchy crossings and tracks, colibris, and finally the famous train passing by our sides, and we are in sight of the village of Aguas Calientes, at the foot of the Machu Picchu, where we hope to find our tickets. Finding tickets when you go last minute to the Machu Picchu is a challenge in itself. Very interesting, we just arrived at technically Machu Picchu town, or Aguas Calientes in other words, um, and it's hilarious because once you get here, there's one road for cars, for buses actually, they go from Aguas Calientes to the entrance of Machu Picchu and you can pay $20 to do the whole trip and there's no other cars so these buses were brought on trains to here and the train is what brings the food and sort of makes this whole place alive and here it's super touristic, I mean we haven't seen anybody, nobody on all the roads and you get here and boom and I'm sure the prices are all insane but that's what it is Awesome! Very cool. At 2.30 we have to go back and get our tickets. So we got our pre-tickets, which are these. It just gives you a, a number to go get your ticket. So hopefully we will get the one we want. Let's hope. For our tickets to be cold, we're going to eat a bit. Everything is quite expensive, but we found the market and it's the usual price. So about $2 for a full lunch. So we're staying here. A cheap lunch secured, we ended up sharing our table with Mexican travelers who came to Peru with the unique objective to travel to Machu Picchu. The site brings in 1.5 million visitors per year. This really puts into perspective the attraction of this site worldwide. It is by far the biggest touristic point of the country, which explains the logistic challenge to get tickets for the site. Well, Aguas Calientes is a bit overwhelming. Like one of the reasons why I was hesitating to come to Machu Picchu is because there's so many people, like so much tourism. It's not a criticize, it's just that I know myself when there's a lot, a lot of people, a lot of like touristic shops, I get a bit overwhelmed by that and I don't appreciate as much the place where I am. I, I know it's something I should correct. Nick is not like that, Nick focuses on the, on the place where we are. And so I really hesitated before coming here because I was scared of like not appreciating the site because of the amount of visitors. 
But I'm still happy we're here. Nikki went to get the ticket. It's on the other side of the square here. And as we get closer to get our precious tickets, the weather sends us a reminder that it can also challenge our chances to see the Machu Picchu. We thought Nick could get the two tickets, but apparently I need to join him, so that's going to be crazy. There's so much rain and I need to run before they skip my turn. I just found them. There's so many people inside. Let me show you. I don't know how long it's going to take because it's really crazy. Every time they call a group, everyone moves seats one by one. So you spend an hour literally moving seats all the time. Look! <laughs> and somehow, considering the logistical challenge of selling thousands of tickets every day, we didn't struggle too much. And finally, we're able to buy our tickets after just an hour of playing musical chairs. We got our precious tickets 8 a.m. tomorrow and the circuits we wanted. So I think this is a successful day. Now we can go enjoy the touristic city of Aguascalientes. Good morning. It is now September the 19th of 2023. It is 7.15 in the morning and we have to walk this way to get our bus to then go to Machu Picchu. And unfortunately, it's still raining. Machu Picchu will still look great. Let's go. We just hope it's not covered with clouds. We've seen like a bunch of videos of people like hiking four days to go to Machu Picchu and they arrive on top and they can't see anything because the view is all foggy. Fingers crossed. A gigantic line of visitors for the bus and 30 minutes drive up the mountains later, we make it to the entrance of the site where neither the weather nor the crowd got better. As you see, we are in the middle of the mist, in the long queue, raining a little bit. I feel like when we're gonna be up there, we're gonna stand and look in front of us and there'll be just mist. <laughs> oh man. We made it inside finally. Uh, it looks like the sun is slowly going to come. Hopefully the mist will dissipate. There we can see it, it's coming, but the mountains across are completely covered. Let's hope we can see Machu Picchu. Alright, let's go. Welcome to Machu Picchu. <laughs> We're hesitating between crying and laughing. We're on the laughing side right now. Just to give you an idea of what most people come to see when they come to Machu Picchu, it looks like that. One spectacular point of view giving a notion of the exceptional sites where this citadel is posted. Unfortunately for us, that day the fog decided otherwise. But we still made the most of our visit. So if we cannot show the view, let us share at least some interesting facts about the place. On the way up, we are reading a bit about the history of Machu Picchu. And it's funny because if the place is exceptional, like it's super high on the mountain and like crazy construction, the history of the site itself is quite uneventful. It was actually built for an Inca emperor for like retreat after a big victory. And after that, it was habited for 80 years maybe, and then entirely abandoned when the Spanish conquest happened. Not that the Spanish came here, just that it was abandoned. People left, either they die of smallpox, 
brought by travelers or they left and went around in other places of the Inca Empire. But basically this site has been habited for less than 100 years. Crazy, no? <laughs> So this here is like a typical Inca building method that they call ashla, in which the blocks of stones are cut to fit together tightly without mortar. And it's actually really nice to see because they feel like perfectly like a puzzle. This one is the same, the whole building is like this. They were building in this manner without mortar. They were doing the terraces constructions all along the cliffs because one of the heavy rains so those constructions and little canals all around the sites were helping for the drainage of the water and because it was more resistant to earthquake so all those shapes were done for those reasons super interesting so despite the fog we're finding interesting elements Eventually, the weather never opened up and we left with limited visibility, not allowing us to appreciate the majestic aspect of the site. We're now hiking all the way back down Machu Picchu. We just came out of the gates. Uh, very nice place, one of the seven wonders of the world, but honestly, you can feel that it's a big business, uh, part of the Machu Picchu experience. Now we hike all the way down. We now need to go down uh, million steps, I don't know how many, but many, uh, to the train tracks and we're going to take all the train tracks all the way back to the Albatros to conclude this Machu Picchu journey. We leave behind one of the new seven wonders of the world. The long stairs, the train tracks, the passing trains, the road in construction, the river crossing. We say goodbye to our new Swiss friends where we met them and took the road back to Cusco. We just said goodbye to our two Swiss friends, uh, Emily and Julian. Uh, they're going the other way. They're actually going north, we're going south. They gave us tons of great tips on what to do, what to see and how to manage you know, all the camping life down south. Uh, and hopefully we'll see them in Switzerland. They were really nice. It would have been awesome to travel a few days with them but we're not going the same direction. Anyway, wish them all the best and we'll see them later in life. We made it off the construction roads. It was long and dusty. Now we're trying to find a place where we can eat and uh, rest for tonight. Nick went out to ask if we can stay next to this small restaurant for tonight and take a shower. Hopefully we can stay here. She says she's gonna make dinner, no problem. Okay. And. Uh, but she said later when everyone's here, so I cook once. Okay. So I said okay. We can take our shower in the meantime. Yeah. All right, we just slept here at this very nice lady's house. Veronica is her name. By the way, if you are going from Cusco to Machu Picchu or vice versa, do stop here. It's incredible. Just send us a message. We'll send you the pin. It is on iOverlander and it has millions of comments. She's incredible. Um, we just finished Machu Picchu. We are now in direction towards Cusco. Um, it was a good experience, even though obviously we were stuck in the clouds good enough we have a million things to see so we're not sad about anything but we are ready to go okay let's go we have one last week in peru a bit less than that and then off we go let's go we waved goodbye veronica we're heading for our last week in peru last but not the least if you want to be sure you do not miss the last week in peru or the following countries subscribe to the channel <laughs> Hey, I heard you want to leave this place where we grew 
Remember you 